everybody has a story in them. And we're about to show you how to get it out. Right here on The Myth Wits. The show dedicated to all things geek pop culture, drenched in absurdity and coated with sarcasm. Every week we bring on an industry guest to talk about the ever-expanding Geekiverse and to play a game with us. We do our damnedest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and joining me this week is my co-host, Michael Kafis. Ah, get it out of me! Get it out of me! <laughs> <laughs> and, oh boy, he's got the shirt. The shirt. We'll have to do that in a second there. Uh, <laughs> joining us this week is our guest, <laughs> returning guest, Dave Robeson. Hola! Hola! Welcome back, yes. Dave. I, I, I am I am now in the story extraction business. We will extract <laughs> the story will. from your soul. <laughs> like just an put a evil. Glove on. <laughs> just, <laughs> wash those fucking heads. All right, anyway, so Dave is an avid literary and vocal alchemist who pursues a wide range of creative exploit explorations. I was going to say exploitations. Hey, maybe both. A brainstormer. Oh, what's that spit take? <laughs> I was promising you. <laughs> keeper of the buttery man voice. Pattern seeker, dream weaver, and eternal optimist. He's currently shepherding Archivos, a story mapping and presentation tool, which we're going to talk a lot about tonight. Uh, but before we go into that, I, you know, I was looking through my show notes from the last time we had you on, and you had another thing that you were working on called Manifest, a board game combining the positional strategy of chess with the fantastical diversity of Magic the Gathering. What happened? What did that come out? Did you did you do the thing? It's it's on back it's on it's on the back burner. I actually I, I recently just pulled it out and and played a game just to make sure it was still as awesome as I remember it was. Spoilers, <laughs> it is. Um, okay. But it's just uh, right now uh, with Archivos and some family things going on. It's it's there's only so many right. plates I can keep spinning. You hear so. that, Pete? Only so many plates. I know, <laughs> Dave. I, I feel you, man. I feel your pain. I feel, I feel it brother. right here. It's right here. You. Right. He's I got all of the plates. I've got okay. anyway. So, <clears throat> so um, but so before we, right. is still, it's still going to happen someday, some way, somehow. I guarantee you. Um, I'm turning 55 tomorrow. By the time I'm 60, that's a promise. There will okay. be something in the works to get manifest out in the world to the peoples. Fantastic. All right. Well, hey, and happy birthday. Happy pre-birthday to happy you. Happy birthday. Birthday Eve. Yes. yes. Birthday I Eve. Do. Yes, sir. Fantastic. I've been rocking the birth week all week long because we don't do birthdays at Shea Robinson. We do birth weeks. Because nice. there's too much awesomeness to cram into a single 24-hour slice of time. Fantastic. Hey, this side of the dirt. Always look at it that way. <laughs> this right. side of the dirt. Right. Upside. Hey. Six feet up, not six feet under. That's right. Hey, you know, before we go, before we go any any further, I want to throw a big much love out to to one of our really good friends, Scott Pond. He is he is going in for surgery tomorrow. We wish him all the like all the best and then some. As yes, much of definitely. the best as there is to offer. He's he's got a, a trying surgery tomorrow, um, and, and our our hearts and thoughts are with him. So oh, yeah, so definitely. big guy, you you get in there and you you kick that. You, you kick the shit out of this. and, and right. yeah. Let the doctors do their stuff. You be awesome in your way. Let them be awesome in their way. And with the two of you, it's it's going to work out. He's that having way. a bad story extracted from him. <laughs> yes. yes. And, <laughs> put that right in the shredder, too. Right. 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 Oh, yeah. And, and I think, go. honestly, I think Scott is just too sexy for it not to go well. I know, you know? right? Like, it's, just, yeah. it's just way too sexy. There are uh, universal it, laws fine. that will be thrown out of whack if anything untoward should happen. And that's just not going to happen. So the right. universe needs that sexiness. Absolutely. Right. And with all the crazy bullshit that's been going on in our universe this last mm, year or so, uh, <laughs> we, we need something to offset that. <laughs> right, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> hey, Tori. Oh. Tori just jumped in the chat room, too. I'm having another problem with my mouse on this computer that I'm monitoring the chat room, so I can't say I'm trying to chat, but I can't. I don't know what's wrong with this damn thing. This so. crazy thing. I need a Microsoft update, I'm guessing. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. Could be. Could hey, be. I just All got right. a high out. Yay. All right, so, hey. So let, let's talk about let's talk. So I've started using Archivos, uh, this mm -hmm. awesome, awesome web-based program that that Dave and crew has put together. Uh, how many of you are there, Dave, that do this? 
Um, at this point, it, we recently uh, uh, did a transition. We had a, a one set of development team building it from scratch and getting us to launch. We've now transitioned into our uh, uh, elite uh, death squad of coders who are getting on board. And right now, we've got one, two, three, four, five uh, uh, coders in some capacity or other, QA, front end, middleware, database, uh, uh, project managers, uh, all manner of of just ninjas doing the thing. Uh, in the coming months, you are going to see some amazing stuff coming out from Archivos. Oh, this thing's going to keep, it's going to keep getting bigger and better. Oh, God, it has to. It absolutely has to. Uh, because the, 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 first of all, the vision that launched it is much bigger than what it is now. This was actually a compromise. My mm -hmm. original vision was, was way too big. Uh, <laughs> and, the, and the people said, look, Dave, how about we scale it back and then we can launch sometime before the next millennia? And I said, okay, <laughs> fine. Fine. Right. Gotcha. So, but we, and, and as, as it turns out, that was a really good uh, uh, advice and I was very smart to take it <laughs> because right. uh, it has become this very cool tool that helps people people visualize what you can't visualize any other way without using a bunch of note cards and and post-it boards and and string uh archivos is your your story board uh for for relationships for geography for your linear timeline all of that stuff uh so yeah there's new stuff coming out we're working on creating uh, media libraries for each of your story elements right now you can only put one image on there but mm -hmm. very soon you're going to be able to put in video, audio, PDFs, multiple images, oh. uh, whatever you want tagged to every individual story element. So, so you, gonna... you could have, if you, if you were a really creative person and you had a team of people and you're creative, let's say you're doing a movie and you use this thing for doing like telling like a movie, you could have like little clips of video of the people talking, maybe even having like clues and stuff to the story. You know, like <laughs> if you were like paying attention, you might pick up on stuff. Uh, yeah, so you absolutely. could use this as a, as a, as a full uh, immersion kind of multimedia addition to the written word. Exactly. Exactly. And for gamers, you know, you can upload your, uh, your character sheet to your character story element. Oh, man, yes. uh, you know, you can have multiple maps. If you have multiple maps of a, of a dungeon, for example, if it's multi levels, you can have one level and then another level and then the other level all in the same story element. Yeah, there's all of that. Oh my gosh. All of Dave. That. This, you know, you're tapping into <laughs> you. the Obsidian Portal crowd, which is awesome. Because you know what? Yeah. That, it, it, there's enough room for everything, and everybody has tools that they like the way they like to use them. And mm -hmm. there's so many gamers and stuff these days. I don't think it would – that friendly competition doesn't hurt anyone, I don't think. I think Absolutely. it's good. Absolutely. You know, and props, props to Obsidian Portal, props to World Anvil. I don't know if you guys have heard of World Anvil. No, um, I have not. Check them out. As far as game, uh, uh, role-playing game campaign management, they are kicking it. Uh, nice. Uh, and I, seriously, you know, they are, they, they, if I, if I had to name our number one competitor, at least in that industry, it's definitely them. Definitely okay. them. And, and they're awesome. They, they deserve to be. Um, the thing is, Archivos expands way beyond just the gaming environment. We will never turn our back on our game peeps. Uh, hell, I run my game through Archivos. But there are other industries, other environments, other demographics that can benefit from this idea of narrative visualization. Mm. Uh, we talked about it, I think, on the, on the last time I was on. Yeah. You know, genealogy, oh, yeah. uh, education. We've actually got educators who have started to use Archivos in the classroom. Oh, uh, nice. Teaching uh, Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, oh, cool. So, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. it's going to be awesome. So I, I know that I'm... I'm already uh, talking about an idea I've already had, but so in the classroom, I see it where you'll have uh, Archivos as a platform that teachers can enter the um, a book, or it can even just be something that they can buy, where like you know, oh uh, Moby Dick, and here's the, all the the visualized parts of it, and we can discuss it, and it can be visual. Oh my God! I would love to have a shared curriculum uh, yeah. marketplace where uh -huh. teachers, you know, teachers can build Moby Dick, for example, and then upload it for their peers uh, uh, yeah. to utilize. You can rate that yeah. stuff and all of that. Absolutely, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. And history, right, so, of course, so all of that. He said, if, he said build Moby Dick. <laughs> yes, he did. Well, the adults were trying to look past that. But the adults. <laughs> <laughs> so, they have pills for that, don't they? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think yeah so. Yes. Uh, 
so for anyone who's maybe been hiding under a rock or has uh, maybe just tuning in, it's like, we, have, we actually, Dave, believe it or not, we've had a few new people join our ranks. This so, is not surprise. Right. Not so surprise. give us uh, the, your uh, one minute, you know, a longer elevator pitch. Okay. Uh, you know, it's a long elevator. We're going to the uh, Empire State Building to the top floor. So you got, a, you got a minute. Uh, and I can do and I'm going to follow it up right after that's done. I'm going to follow it up with what I've been doing with it. So we can, we can, we can right. tell, then we can Hotness. show. All right. Hotness. Excellent. All right. So Archibos is basically a narrative visualization tool. It's essentially a visual wiki where you can document the, the people, the places, the events of your narrative, whether that's a role-playing game, whether that's a slice of history, the, the civil rights movement that you want to document, or a novel that you're preparing to write for NaNoWriMo. Doesn't matter. You document those story elements, create relationships between them. So this person was at this event at this location using this thing, for example. Uh, and then once you've got those documentations and networks in place, Archivos gives you three display modes that allows you to actually not only see, but interact with that network of association. So the story web shows you these, these orbiting elements. Every central element has the characters and places that they're connected to. And then the characters and places and events that those characters are related to. So you get this six degrees of separation thing going on. The living map allows you to do the same thing with geography. So you upload a map and then attach places and events to on that map, which gives you that spatial orientation, that context. And then the timeline gives you a linear chronology of every documented event. And it's not just this event happened, but this person at this location with representing this organization, blah, blah, as much detail as you have, Archivos can support. And then you navigate through that, you explore it. Uh, it's great for people that are developing these things uh, because you can actually see the gaps or the inconsistencies or the uh, uh, discontinuities. Uh, that becomes very clear because it's a visual map. But it's also very cool for people that want to promote and bring attention to their stories because you can make these public and let people view them. You can even set it up so that like your, only your Patreons, uh, uh, can Patreon supporters can see the archives. You make it invitation only viewing or like whatever. that okay so, yeah. Yeah. So, so spence in the chat room said uh like colonel mustard in the kitchen with the candlestick like yes you could actually use archivos to video. solve yes. clue you will be a clue <laughs> champion with archivos yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> fantastic all right so let, let's do that let's let's um so i did i have just started now i've only spent two or three like, uh, about two days working on this yeah, yeah. and not two full days I spent the weekend putting some some data in now so just so you know where this data is coming from uh, I'm I've been preparing a novel for a I don't know how many years now <laughs> but I've been preparing a novel f for too many years now over 10 years yeah okay wow. so I, I finally yeah. decide I'm gonna write it but of course I can never do just one thing so uh, so, so the novel itself, uh, I, so, okay, I've decided I'm going to write my novel for NaNoWriMo, but it's not going to be this novel. It's going to be uh, a bunch of paraquills, prequels, and postquills, I don't know, what are sequels, um, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's going to be an anthology of stories that revolve around the novel, and then I'm going to write the novel. And there's two, re there's two reasons for this. For one, I need practice. I don't want to write my first novel first first thing I write out the gate you know what I mean so I figured if I write a bunch of short stories that gives me a little bit of time to get some practice hone my craft and it's easier to fix a bad short story than to fix a bad novel so hey, I thought I would hey, start there Dave let me let me just uh, interject for one sec Pete's a decent writer first of all all right we, we all know that we've, and, we've participated in his live right. readings at Balticon well right. yes uh, his writing is no reflection of uh, other people's readings, uh, as, you know. Although your readings are a reflection <laughs> of of certain John Walker readings. John Walker, we're not gonna <laughs> <laughs> no, I love what he does. I, I don't want to discourage that at all. I can't wait till he does it again. But anyway, yeah. so so I've got these. I, I started outlining these these um, 
these side stories, these short stories that, that go with the novel. And I also thought it would be fun if people were reading the novel and they had all these short stories that tied into different pieces of it, you know, and, and would expand on some things and would tell the backstory on some others. Um, so what I'm going to do for NaNoWriMo, and I'll, we'll get to that a little bit later, is I'm going to write these short stories. So what I decided was, I was like, I'm going to th start throwing some of these short stories that I'm going to be writing into uh, Archivos so that when I do NaNoWriMo, I have a linear line and all my connections laid out. And I've got all my stuff so that when I'm writing, I can just go and I don't have to worry about screwing up a whole bunch of timelines and stuff like that. Especially so, if you're doing periquils where there are yep. stories happening concurrently with your yes. main novel. You need to have that timeline so you can mm -hmm. see where the overlaps are. Yeah, absolutely. So in the, P in the Peterverse. Oh, so so there's Peterverse. There's the, the Peterverse. So there so there's one called the Baron's Quest, and that's one of the stories. And it it kind of tells um, the story of two of the characters, two of the main characters in the novel. It kind of gives you. It's supposed to give you a feel. It's about ten years ago, uh, before the novel starts. It kind of give you their relationship and I'm also trying to discover my character some too so that when I'm writing about them in the novel I have a feel for who they are and I find that when I write I actually discover who my characters are more so as I'm writing so Absolutely. It, it gives me a chance to flesh them out some for me to discover who they are and to build their kind of relationship and to give the reader an idea of what they were like before they got to the novel why are they in this novel how did they get here so mm -hmm. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the Baron's Quest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to share my uh, my Archivos screen. So here oh, we go. While you're doing that, mom, my, my mom uh, just kind of busted on you a little bit when you were yep. talking about your paraquills and your, you know, your liviquills and, and all these quills. And she's yeah. like, Nyquils? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they might put you to sleep. All right. So um, so here we oh, go. Mom. So this nice. so let's, mythic so, steel. Yeah, Mythic Steel is the name of my book, of my name of my novel, or, or of the world. It's sort of the genre of the world itself. Um, and so I put a whole bunch of stuff in. I put some dates in. I put, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I put a lo couple locations in, a bunch mm -hmm. of characters. Um, and as you can see, I, you know, put in quite a few. Yeah. I made relationships. Not all the relationships are in yet because, you know, I'm like, as I'm going through, it's like, oh, my God. You know, Dave, it's a little bit of work because you're like, oh, yeah, this person's connected to this person, which is connected to this person, which is connected yep. to this place and this timeline. Um, so so let, let's start with – let's go back to the, the Baron's Quest. So here we go. we got the Baron's Quest. I'm going to pull that up. Uh, it's an event. Mm -hmm. Um you know, some things happen. I got some notes in here. I could have put some more notes in. I even added the date. Uh, Can you link happened. music or ambient sounds and or uh, sound effects to certain things? Is that is that in the uh, that's in two point oh or two point five? That'll be in two point oh. Yeah. Okay. But I, like, I, I know you wanted that now, though. Yeah, I, I know did. You so, <laughs> I really did. So you can put information in. You can have, like, there's a short description. It's what everybody can see, a long description if you want to. They, I guess if they click on it and they read it. Uh, and then you can put notes in that are only visible to you. So these are your notes to yourself that your audience can't see, which is good because sometimes you need to know things that they cannot know. But mm -hmm. then I go in here I attach these, these uh, relationships. So just so you know, uh, the Baron's Quest, Baron's Quest takes place in a place called Isbeth, and uh, the characters that are involved, this guy Sir Jonathan, Baron Luxor, Farla Lorne, James Campbell. There's also a bad guy, which I haven't attached to this yet, uh, <laughs> but, but, um, but, but I, I don't think I put him in yet, so that's probably why he's not attached yet. So, so this is all like kind of the background data, but then if I go to, if I go to, uh, let's go to Timeline, okay? I go to the timeline, and there it is. There's Baron's Quest. So I put it on the timeline. And it shows us who's attached to it, right? Uh, here's the profile. And I can very also... shortly, those, those story elements that are down there, elements related to Baron's Quest, those yeah. will be clickable. They're, so you can click on James Campbell and go to oh. his story web. And okay, you can't go. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. Because right now you have to click on view all elements and then go to him, right? You can't do it just from uh, here. I, I think I think in the timeline, for whatever reason, the original development team did not wire those things up. In the okay. living map and in the story web, it does work. Okay. Uh, on the timeline, it does not, but it will very very shortly. But okay, so just so you know, I'll go back. Um, oops, sorry. Timeline. Um, here we go. Blah blah blah. 
there's also I put a, I think I put a second one in. Um, graduation day. Yeah. yeah, graduation day is a second one. So that's another event that happens about ten years later, right? Yep. Uh, and it involves some of the it involves one of the same characters uh, and his new apprentice and a place that they go. So I'm going to go to the map now. So you know, the you didn't put map. the welcome wench in there. Not yet, not yet. So here, here's a map, and this is an. I gotta update this map, but this is a map I've been working with for the past ten years, <clears throat> and um, <laughs> this is the this is the land is called Illyria. Uh, Astoria is the country that this happens in, and here's Isbeth, right? right? So if you go to if you go to Isbeth, right, you see there's all there these characters go. are attached to it, right? And they're hot. They're links. They will take they, you to yep. different locations, or yeah, yep. So if I click on that, you know, you can see that goes all these to the full profile. Yep. Uh, so it's it's pretty cool. This is really really cool. Now if I go back to, let me go back to. Can I can I just go to? Let's go to here. All right. So we're gonna go to. Go you need to, to close that. It doesn't close automatically. I'm sorry. All right. Well, that's all right. That's all right. We'll go right back here. Um, let's go to Isbeth. I'm gonna do this by name. And I like that because you can click on stuff and get it alphabetical or however or the order you put it in. Yep. Um, oh, the map, yes. So this, there's this the map of the world. Uh, let's see, what else did I need to do? I could attach a map. I could attach an image of this to show Isbeth closer up and show places in Isbeth if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, which is very cool. You get that sort of geographical hierarchy where you've got a country or a continent, and then you can drill down to the country, then drill right. down to a city, so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so another thing that's really cool is let's go to one of the guys that's involved in this, uh, and he's one of the first people I put in here, uh, James Campbell. He's involved in a lot of things. He's one of the main characters in my book. Um, there is – what is it? Oh, I know what I'm looking for. I'm sorry. I apologize. Elements, uh, story web. That's what I want. Story web. There you story go. web is cool. So here's James Campbell, oh, and you can see I, I, that's the best he, part of this whole thing, right there. The He's attached right there. to so many things. Like, there's a thing with him at the port of Qatar. There's a thing with him at graduation day. He he's stationed out of Isbeth, which is in Astoria, which is yep. in Illyria. Um, there is uh, Liam is uh, joins him on on a, on a mission to the port of Qatar. Now I didn't link it in, or else he probably would appear for the Baron's quest as well. Oh no, he's not in that one. That's right. That makes sense. He's not in that one. Um, <laughs> here's Baron Luxor, who is uh, his sort of liege. Uh, so it's just really cool. And if, and if you click on any one of these, then it takes you to a new breakout, which shows yep. you that person's relationship. Yep. Um, so this this is really awesome. This is this and is as you continue cool, to build right? those relationships and add those elements, that story web becomes more and more complex and more and more specific to each story element. And you literally can get this feel, this sense of flavor as you navigate through and and explore each story element in sequence. That yep yep. So that's how I'm using it, and I guess I'm using it correct then. Seems Absolutely. like it. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. Right, Archivos cool. thumbs up, baby. <laughs> cool. And oh, filtering filter display by character. So these are okay. Very cool. All right, neat. I didn't even I haven't even tried that yet. Regis. Now I did have a question. So let's say I want to add an element. What okay. is the difference between a location okay. and a region? Uh, that is that is there there is no difference at all. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. In fact, in future versions, you, you've actually touched on a very interesting thing. Um, we're going to be, uh, we're not going to be re, uh, re engineering those element types, but we are going to be making some refinements to them. For example, uh, yeah, region and location, that is a purely conceptual thing. There is literally okay. no difference functionally. It's just a, a, a word choice. So we're going to combine those in and call it place and you okay. decide. Um, right. We're going to change character to person. Uh, okay. And we're probably going to create a set of default element types for any story element and then allow you to add additional story element types or mm -hmm. create your own. Because okay. I guarantee you every writer is going to have this thing that they want in their world <laughs> that we didn't cover. <laughs> right, right, right. Absolutely. Okay. So we're going like to you create your own and then build that into your story web.
Like, I could see somebody wanting to put in, like, spell. I don't see spell in here. It's like, well, it could be an item. It's like, but I want to call it a spell. It's like, okay. Exactly. Right, right, exactly. exactly. Okay. You know, or religion. You know, some people, yeah. their story oh. or their... You know, that, right. Dave, that would make yeah. good sense because that's... I mean, yes, that could fall under organization. Right. But... Uh, you yeah. might want to use organizations as businesses, and exactly. then so you, want, you to build... want to break it out. You want right. businesses and religions as yeah. separate entities. I, I've right. got so, one. I got one. Like for a you, parent-child Dave. type of relationship. So yeah, I get it. One of the things that's going on in, and you know, I'm going to stop sharing this because we've already seen what we need to see. One of the things that I'm going to that is going into to my story is something called the Red Death, and you remember this from last year. Sure. It's yep. a disease. It's sort of like I combine sort of zombies and Black Death, uh, you know, because the medieval days they had the Black Death. Um, so the Red Death is sort of like the Black Death, but it turns people into these infected, like, zombies. Now, they're, un they're not undead, they're just infected, uh, and, it's, and it's fairly easy to, to take them out if you get a handle on it ahead of time. So it can never really turn into a zombie apocalypse, which is something I totally did not want. I did not want this to be a zombie game, but I did want to have, like, something like it. But um, it's also very easy to get the Red Death if you're fighting them. So yeah, yeah. Plague contagion factor. Right. Yes, yes. And so I could see having disease, like having that as a, as a thing in there because you could say, well, I want to see where the Red Death has affected places. So you could mm -hmm. click on the Red Death and it would show you this town, this town, this town, this town, or, what, sure. or you know, this part of the woods. Well, um, you could also argue that the Red Death is an event uh, oh, that, has, okay. that spans many, many years that is comprised of smaller outbreaks as it rises and falls in contagion across the land. There, yeah. are, there are a number of ways to, from a story design and development standpoint, document those things. But you're absolutely right. I can, you can totally make a case for having a disease story element type and then having mm -hmm. that be related to the people that have caught it or come in contact with it or whatever. Definitely, definitely. Right, right, right. Fantastic. Oh, and Spence, uh, Spence is watching and Spence... I, I was I was watching her on your 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 uh, nightly podcast. Uh, I was watching you guys, and she was in the chat room with me, and we were uh, we were chatting across. I don't think she had joined you just yet. I think she was in the chat, or maybe she, no, no, she was on. She said, I, and I said something about you know uh, one of my stories, and and she was saying um, that she likes she wants to be an evil character. She has no one has given her the chance to play like an evil That's evil right. character. Somebody needs and, to write her an evil character. And Spence, I got it. I got it. There is a place in my novel that I'm going to put you in charge of a a group. It's going to be four really badass assassin women that are hired to kill our heroes. And you are going to be the leader. You're, I'm going to write a character who I'm going to name. I'm going to name them in some way that that associates with you. And in my mind, it is you. But but you is very evil. You're not really evil. You're a super nice person, but you will be evil in this story. So, uh, so your w wish granted. I'm going to do it. There you go. Should name it Black Moon to go with Black her to go with her resonant, uh, moon? Uh, resonant moon Productions. Oh, mm -hmm. I like that. The, I Black, like that. the Black Moon Assassins. Fantastic. And if you go into Archivos and you look up that character, <laughs> you might find out that that character's real name is Spencer. But the it's only way done it's canon. But the only way you can find that out is if you go into Archivos and read about it. <laughs> I love it. There love you it. go. And that's that's there another thing. Another thing that's really good is you know nobody likes uh, almost nobody. I, I think there's some people who do like it, but I, I can't imagine anyone who does. But I guess some people do. <laughs> like info dumps in books, you know, where there's all this stuff you need to know, and the, and the author just dumps just like just just. Bleh, all this information on you at one time but there are some times where it's like but i need them to know that to understand what's going on it's like ah but you see and i was going to do it through a website or through like a wiki but i could use archivos to do this exactly. where i could do all the info dumping info dump my ass out to ev you know everything i need people to know right and, well, and any writer will tell you that when that by the time you get done with a finished novel there is this stack of story stuff over here that didn't make it for whatever reason. And yeah, Archivos, Archivos, that's, I mean, how exciting would that be for a fan of the book to be able to go into an Archivos setting and discover more information about that world? So quick question yeah. from um, Big Daddy Spence. He, he wonders, uh, 
public he said uh are there settings in archivos to make it um all public or just group uh or private only absolutely absolutely so in archivos we have three uh levels of subscriber um the basic level is absolutely free and anybody out there that's that wants to build up their their book their story for NaNoWriMo in archivos you can do it for free and, and this isn't a special deal or anything. This is our basic level. You get one story setting private for free. The next level up is six bucks a month, chump change. You get unlimited private story settings. You still can't share them, but you can have a separate story setting for this character. You can have a separate story setting for the history of the Thieves Guild, whatever you want. At the professional level, that's eight bucks a month, still very reasonable. You have the capability of sharing it publicly to the world in our story catalog, or you can set up invitation only viewing where you keep the setting private, but you can include enter email addresses for people that you want to be able to see the setting. Now they need to have a basic account so that Archivos can recognize them when they log in to know to give them access to your setting, but it's the basic account. It's free. Nobody has to pay any extra money to go in there. Um, also at the professional level, you get to collaborate. So if you ha are, are doing a shared world with multiple writers and they all need access to create and edit and modify those story elements at the professional level, you can invite as many colleagues as Holy you want shit. to work in your setting simultaneously. So, so let me ask, you're working, do you still work with Ed Greenwood? I don't. I don't. You don't? Okay. No, the, the Ed Greenwood Group project, is, as, as I understand it, has, has uh, gone into, into the twilight. Really? Okay, I didn't. Okay, it was very ambitious. You never know what the future holds, but, sure, but for sure. now, yeah. But that was that was a super super ambitious project. I mean, I'm 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 saddened to hear that, but I'm not surprised, and not surprised in a negative way. Not surprised in like a holy shit, I couldn't believe he was doing it to begin with. You know, it was very that was ambitious. a real shoot for the moon kind of project, which is why I jumped all over it because uh, right. I love that kind of scope and magnitude and and. You know, yeah, it's it was it was, it yeah. It was sorry, but <laughs> but I'm not, thinking that Archivos would have been great for that for you all to like to yeah. collaborate on ideas because you could have been putting stuff in there, and if um, you know if Ed had to take a look at it just to make sure things were jiving with each other, he could go through your thing and go, oh hey 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 Dave, were well, you writing about this guy? He can't he can't be doing that because. Right. X and you're like okay. Or if he wants to add something that everybody will see immediately, he just goes in, adds it, and now we all have access to it. Right. Okay. Or yeah. or he has an idea like, hey, I want to add this character in. Use him if you want. Here's where he is. Here's where he would be. This is what I think he should be doing. And you might exactly. say, well, I like that, but I'm gonna make this little change. And he'd be like, okay, yeah, all right, fine, sure, yeah. right. Very and cool. Since every display in Archivos, when you look at a story element, is a URL. It's a it's an online function so you can actually take uh, the url of you looking at that character put that into an email or a facebook post or a twitter and send it out and people when they click that link will go directly to that story element assuming it's a public setting if it's private they'll say uh sorry can't go there so so, so i'm thinking i'm thinking that you know for, for writers who who have patreon so i'm gonna i'm gonna name somebody i know uh, Phil Rossi. Phil Rossi writes excellent books. He has a Patreon that he's very uh, active with. I think this would be a fantastic for, thing for him to 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 build his stories on, and then put it in the. But you could only get access to it through the Patreon, right? So it would encourage his patrons to watch the stories get created and see all the background stuff. Because you can always, you can still keep the stuff hidden that you want to keep hidden, stuff you don't want revealed. So people could like, like, hey, I'm gonna write this story. If you if you pay into my Patreon, this is the level you know you, you have access to sure. it, and That's then right. they could see all the characters and kind of like where the story is gonna be located. Like get something, like, oh, and get all excited. He's drumming up excitement. They're happy to read it, um, and yep. you know it gives them something for the Patreon that he's doing for himself anyway. You know what I mean? So he's yeah. just sharing, the, yeah. and it's collaborative. They feel like they're part of the, the thing, which I love. I love being part of that, you know, watching a creator grow and being a part of that. Absolutely, and and being able to engage with that. And and to, to continue on the, the original question from Big Daddy Spence, the other thing that you can do is you can set your individual story elements to be public or private as well. 
uh, so that uh, if you have a big bad that you want to hold in reserve, but you still want to document it so you can see it, then you just make that a private story element. Nobody sees it until you make it public. Right, but, yeah, yeah. yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, so, absolutely. So, the challenge, I think, for, for, for Rossi and for anyone, and even for you, Peter, is going to be, is going to be the time. Um, what we haven't been able to to solve the problem of yet in Archivos is the 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 overhead of getting those story elements in, getting the documentation in, creating those relationships. Our UI people are working on it even as we speak to find ways to streamline that as much as possible. Uh, but you know, find a fan. Uh, you know, when you're developing a story like you are, Peter, it's perfect because you're already right. building stuff as you go. But, right. you know, if Rossi wants to put his stuff in there, if John Miro, for example, wants to put his stuff in there, find a fan who would say, oh, God, yes, I would love to support you. Then you give th make them a collaborator in your setting and let them build as you go. Uh, could you imagine if the GFL was in Archivos? Oh, shit. Yeah, <laughs> that would be awesome. Uh, somebody call A. Somebody call right. A. We're going to make that happen. Well, they, they ha he has uh, John Viscaro, right? Does all his uh, archiving and stuff. I think it's Big Big John Viscaro. That's who needs an uh -huh. archivist account. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yep. Uh, now, go. so so Mike, what do you think? Uh, is this something I should do? Should I should I uh, kick off a uh, a Patreon for for Aether uh, Aether Forge Creations for NanoRimo and and have the anyone who wants to join me on this journey see some of the background stuff I'm doing and 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 also get updates to through the Patreon, like watch it through the Patreon. What do you think? Couldn't hurt, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, what? Yeah, I mean, a, a buck a, a buck a buck a month. Rough, the only a thing buck I'm, a duck, a, you know, the only thing I'm worried about is though is that Nanorimo is going to be hectic, and I don't mm. want to derail it in any way by like trying to do extra stuff on top of it because it'd be hard yeah. enough just writing the. I tell you, know, you what you do. Words. All right, here's what you do. You write your freaking ass off in November, right? Mm -hmm. And then when you feel like you've got something good, then you do a Patreon. And then you start inviting people to look at it. And if, you know, kind of use the Patreon as sort of a, a barometer to see, oh, people are liking this and they're going to pay money and keep on it and Wait keep, you, and keep you motivated and keep you going. And that's a, that's yeah. a good idea. That's a good idea because then um, – because because when I'm when I'm done with NaNoWriMo, I'm not going to have a finished story. You have yeah. the first draft, right? right? And then that's when you need to really and and you probably have to write some more words. Like it's only fifty thousand words. So if you want to release a fifty thousand word book, fine. But if you want to release, you know, an eighty thousand, which is pretty much, I don't really think you can call it a novel till it's eighty thousand, right? And, and you're going to need me to be your A because you're going to. I know you. You're going to have so many, like, ideas and offshoots. You're going to be like, oh, my God, I got this idea. And today I started writing this. I'm like, no, stop it. <laughs> Finish, <laughs> chapter. And you Finish get the back chapter. Right. right, 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 right. All right, cool. So we, we've talked a lot about NaNoWriMo. And, and um, you know, I don't want to go over time. So let's, let's talk about NaNoWriMo real quick. Dave, have you... Now you've written books, right? You've written, you've I've, written, I've written some stuff. I've written a book. I haven't okay. been published, uh, but I have written a book. Okay. Um, and have you ever? Did you have you ever participated in NaNoWriMo at all? I did. I did. I okay. participated twice, and I am I am at fifty percent. I I won one, and I failed one. Okay. Now, what does it mean to win, and what does it mean to fail? Okay. The goal of NaNoWriMo is fifty thousand words, starting November first. Ending November 31st, midnight to midnight, uh, uh, and, and as much as you can in there. It averages out to about uh, 1,667 words a day. Uh, some people make that a daily goal, and they hit that. Some people have different processes. It's like, oh, I can knock out 3,000 words every two days. Like, fabulous. Knock yourself right. out. Uh, some people binge it on the weekends because for whatever reason, they, they can't during the week. However it breaks down, if you get 50,000 words by – November 31st, you have won NaNoWriMo. The, the idea is that you have written a novel. As you observe, Peter, it is not a finished novel. Do not submit your NaNoWriMo completed novels into anyone because you will be laughed at. Uh, <laughs> it needs to go through extensive edits and revisions to make it a polished, oh, yeah. finished tale. Um, right. That's what it means to win and, and to lose. And, and honestly... And to uh, learn. 
Yeah, and it, it is exactly it's a love. It's a laugh and to cry. Now, I can tell you from my personal experiences, there is nothing more liberating than knowing that this is your word count. This is your goal. And even if you've never written that much before, it's like license to suck. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> screw it. I am going to write the words that are in my head just so I get my word count. And that's the initial hit. I'm going for my word count. But as soon as you turn off that editor and just put whatever's in your head on paper, you will discover that there is some awesome stuff in your head. Campbell was really, 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 really angry at that guy who really, 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 really pissed him off. I will smack you. Mike, if if you're writing, if that is is how you start, I'm sorry. You, there's there's just too much work. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe you should I, learn. Uh, you should you should learn to get fiddle. Hey, you know, get fiddle. You know, you know what my net my version of NaNoWriMo would be, like the audible version. So I would be dictating my book in NaNoWriMo. Right. Right. There you go. Right. There now, you go. Now, Dave, these, and, and these ticklers aren't made for typing. Okay. And you've seen you've seen you've seen some of my writing. So so two of my short stories. They're fr- they're actually those are actually two chapters from the the, the novel proper. So the yeah. proper novel. Those are two chapters uh, that are going into. Gonna start writing that. God damn you. No no no, dude. Trust me. This is going to be good. This this no, this anthology. Trust me, just start writing the novel. No no no. no. It's going A on you now. It's no no. You don't understand. So this is going to be a A-hole. book. <laughs> Unto itself, this is this is actually going to be a book, and I'm going to get it published. I've already got somebody who said that if it's if it doesn't suck, they'll publish me. So, wow. <laughs> so all that I have to do, incentive. all that I have to do incentive. is not suck. <laughs> uh, so, so Mike, you know TJ El Topo, right? Yeah. His his uh, he is connected with a book company called Rocket Boy Books. Uh, he said that. Um, he said that now he's not the guy that makes the decision on that, but he's pretty sure you know he you know that that if it doesn't suck, we'll he'll, we'll make it happen. Right. And TJ is gonna I'm gonna I have to discuss it with the with his partner, um, but it shouldn't be too hard because you know TJ's his partner. I want TJ to paint the cover of the book for me if it's if, uh, if that's a doable. Yeah. Because I be I love his TJ's got some cool art skills. Yeah. But we also know some people at the uh, University of Florida Press, so you know there's uh, there's other that. connections we have too. That's, that's true. true. That's so true. many connections through through the podcast, through Balticon, yeah. through sure. yeah. through your circle of associations, dude. So yeah. all you need to do is not suck. Don't all suck. I did, I just gotta not suck. That's all. Just don't suck and write the end, <laughs> and everything else is cake. Right, right. So, why, why so my, more people don't do this? I don't know. It's so easy. Yeah. So, so I do. I do really, a lot really, of really, really easy. I do a lot of, of of. I'm an outline writer, so I'm not a I'm not a pantser. I'm a planner. Is that what it is? Planner versus pantser. Uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm sort of I'm sort of fifty fifty. What I do is I I determine the scenes that I want. So I it's like I want this scene followed by this scene followed by this scene. But they're the action points. They're they're the they're the the exciting bits. The the parts mm-hmm. that that people would talk that you know you would hope that people would talk about. Mm-hmm. And then the stuff in between is complete pantser. I don't know how I'm going to get them from here to here, and I don't really care. When I get there, I'll write it. I know what I'm writing to, and I know what I'm writing from. And then you know I can I can figure it out in between. And I'm a big dialogue guy. I love dialogue. I love thick, rich, drippy, meaty dialogue. So if you aren't into that, you will not like my books. <laughs> and I'm okay. I am fine with that because I love dialogue like nobody's business. I love when people say witty things to one another. Yes, Tarantino is one of his uh, yes inspirations. I, I love oh, yes. Tarantino. Love Tarantino. Very fine. And you know, it's a lot of people. They say they love Tarantino and they love all the violence and all the crazy stuff that he does. And mm. it's just like, but his dialogue, his the dialogue, characters. His characters. Oh my, oh my god! It's the writing. It's not the the violence is great and all, but that's just like exclamation points at the end of his sentences. Mm. You got to look at the sentences. You know, the 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 talk, the characters, the the, the you know, the action is all secondary to all that, mm-hmm. and it should always yeah. be. Oh, yeah. here's a good question. Okay. Could uh, Archivos be linked to Discord? Hmm. How would that be? How would, how would you do that? 
I'm uh, I'm, yeah, like, I'm I'm Discord Discord and I I I I've used Discord a little bit, yeah, but mostly just as a chat room and forum. Yeah. Um, I oh God. Well, I'll, I'll, okay. I'll, let me let me let me let me address as best I think I can. Um, uh, certainly, since it's a since everything is a URL in Archivos, you can link from it from Discord. Mm-hmm. You can put a hyperlink in the Discord chat uh, uh, and link away. Um, I will also say that if you have uh, separate Discord chat rooms, and again, I'm, I might be talking completely out the other side of my face because I don't know if Discord has chat rooms, um, but I if they, they do. do. If they do, if you have a chat room for a character, for example, um, one of the properties of any story element is a thing called related links. And that allows you to put a link to an external website in the profile for that character. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a chat room for this character or this location or this event, then you could put a link to the Discord chat room for that story element in the elements profile. You know what you could do? So with Discord, can you, I don't know, can you save conversations like audio conversations in Discord? Mm. I don't know. See, I, I haven't used Discord. Could. I'd I haven't used, record them. I haven't used Discord enough, but. She's like saying like to take the chat of the day and link it for collab, for collaborations and stuff. Can you put audio on can you is right okay. now you can't put audio on archivos that's another question too yeah not at this time but okay. soon within within the next before before i'm going to say before uh uh the end of 2018 you will technically be able to if you that. had access to park audio files you could l- put a link and then have it linked to it absolutely absolutely um i i i think i get what he's saying he, he's looking for discord chat in the same window as Archivos so that when people are collaborating, yeah. they can actually collaborate live with chat as well as working with the story elements. Mm. Um, and that's inspired. Uh, and the answer is no. <laughs> 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 but, uh, but, but I would a, imagine you guys have something on the back burner for a collaboration piece. Yeah. Built we're, in. Looking, Here's. we're looking to include chat. Uh, we're looking to actually have uh, uh, like Google Google Docs style yeah, collaboration where you're literally seeing yeah. stuff as oh, yes. that's that's where it's at. Yes. Working yes, on yeah. it. Working on okay. it. Okay. Make it so. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, Dave, I have I have uh my laptop went up, so I had to get something else. I bought a Chromebook because I do so much collaboration with people and I use Google Docs so much that I was just like honestly a Chromebook really is what I need when I'm away from home. Because yeah. I'm not editing videos when I'm when I'm away from home, you know uh i i don't really stream stuff and if i really 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 want to stream stuff i got an iphone 10 that does a fantastic job it's amazing and how good it does so you know i just i was like and it's like i don't know like a third to half the a half to a third of the price of a windows note notebook and it has been fantastic i love it i took it to the ocean with me i did a bunch of work on it it's so simple so, i don't have so to worry no about window, it. With no windows updates at all no Windows yeah. updates, Mike. No oh. Windows updates. None. I just kind of got a quarter chub on that one. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. So far, so far, I like it. I'll let you know when a year rolls up. All right, there so hey, right, let's, let's wrap this game. up. Yeah, we got a game to do. But Dave, any last words on Archivos or NaNoWriMo? Absolutely. Uh, friends, as I mentioned earlier, you can get into Archivos for free right now and get your free basic uh, subscription account and help b- build your story before you go into NaNoWriMo. The more prepared you are, the easier it's going to be, not easy, easier, it's going to be <laughs> to get those target word counts. Uh, document what you can. Don't worry about putting everything in there. Just give yourself that framework. I will also say, that until November 31st, we are offering a special deal to our NaNoWriMo people. Uh-oh. If you enter the coupon code NaNoWriMo2018, when you purchase a personal or professional level account, you will get that account for free for one month. So nice. you can try out all the bells and whistles for a month. Give that a shot. See if it appeals. If not, at the end of the month, you can just roll back to the basic account. If, and it's not going to be for everybody. I know that. Uh, but I'm betting it will because this is your free nickel bag of awesomeness. Um, uh, <laughs> but regardless, you can try it out for a month with all the bells and whistles. 
Use it to win NaNoWriMo. Finish that thing. Get your 50,000 words and, and feel that sense of triumph at the completion of a goal like that. So that is N-A-N-O. R I M O 2018 for a free uh, month. W R I M O. W R I. Sorry. Yes. National Nano. Novel Writing, Writing Month. month. So oh, oh I, I need Nano Spyro Spelling Month. <laughs> spelling oh, yeah. Checkers, yes, yes, you do. Exactly. And, 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 you know, that this is this is a really fantastic thing that you're doing. I, I love that. That's, you know, it just, you can tell it's not just about, you know, starting this, this business online. You love writers, Dave. I can tell. I it's I, you really do. Deeply, and, and you know, I, I was I got biz dev people telling me, you know, Dave, God, you're you're not charging enough. You should charge twenty bucks a month for this thing, and it's like, but then the people that I want to use it won't. Right. <laughs> so right. It's like, exactly. No, sorry. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I do love writers, and and yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that because this really is this is something that I want. You know, I. I want it to be successful. I want it to be sustainable uh, uh, and get me a living wage, but I also want it to help writers and get more stories in the world. Right. And, and you know, as you add more and more and more features, <clears throat> maybe you create a level where it's just like there are certain features that not that writers don't particularly need. be nice mm -hmm. if they add them, but they don't mm -hmm. particularly need it. And if they're just, you know, because writers don't make crap for money. If... <laughs> If they're just getting into the field and they're like, you know what, I can live without those features. Maybe they buy a cheaper mm -hmm. membership and you could charge more for a premium membership. You're not trying to keep them away from it, but hey, you got to pay your bills. I mean, you, you know, you do a lot of work on this. You, you should make some money. It's a lot of make work. Some you know? Make some right. bank. Make some bank. Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with making a few bucks. Nothing Thank wrong you. at all. All right, so uh, Mike, I am going to go to the game, and, and as soon as I click this thing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna click it in three, two, one. All right, hey everybody, welcome to hey. Game Time with the Mythwits. I am your hostess with the mostess, Michaelito <laughs> Cafes. Uh, today we are going to play. Uh, what do we call this again, Pete? <laughs> Rank movies. Rank, rank my movie. <laughs> rank my movie. You want to say rank my movie? All right. Well, yeah. it'll be rank. Let, let's. I'll change that right now. I don't know. Rank my movies. Rank. I don't know. Whatever. Right. So okay. uh, basically, uh, I am going to give you guys three movies, and um, these movies are from Ranker.com's uh, top 100 movies of all time. From you know, it's basically just hashtag people's choice. Okay. Uh, so there's a lot of lists. You can go to uh, you know uh, IMDb, and you can go to Rotten Tomatoes, and everyone's list is going to be a little bit different based on the clientele. So this is just the general dregs of the internet ranking, um, you know, movies in the in the top form. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the slots, uh, and and we're going to use um, this. Uh, I'm going to talk you through number one. Okay, and we're going to have Pico first. He'll be the guinea pig. All right. Awesome. Now. Uh, Pete, this is for slots in the top 100, for slots 11, 12, and 13, okay? So you will know that this is 11, 12, and 13. And the, the names and the movies that I'm going to give you, the listings, I have randomized them. And however they came up randomized in well, basically one, two, and three, then I attached them to the, to the movie. So sometimes they come up as the listing as they are. Uh, in the right order, sometimes they won't. So the order that I give them to you doesn't matter. You just need to figure out, okay, these three, wh which ones are they going to, how are they going to rank, okay? Okay. So for instance, Pete, uh, yeah. Fight Club, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, the second one is Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. And the third one is Star Wars Episode Five: The Empire Strikes Back, okay? Okay. So... Basically, you need to say which one is in slot 11, which one is in slot 12, which one is in slot 13. So it's all right or all or wrong? You might get one right. I'll tell you what. You will get a point for each one that's in the right slot. How's that? <laughs> Ooh, oh, my God. Okay. All right. So what are my choices again? Indiana Jones. Right. Star Fight Wars. Club. Empire Strikes Back and Fight Club. Right. All right. right. So I'm going to say uh, Indiana Jones – then Star Wars or Empire? No, whoa, no, no, no. Empire Strikes Back. Oh, Empire Strikes Back. All right, so Empire Strikes Back, Indiana Jones, Fight Club. I agree. Okay. Uh, 
Can you hit your uh, wrong button for me? <laughs> this one? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, for, for the trifecta, you didn't get it. However, you did get one slot correct. Okay. Uh, so you are going to get one point. I will give you one point for... Are you going to keep score? Yeah, I got it. Okay. So uh, that will be one point for you for this uh, number 11 uh, in movies of all time, uh, Empire Strikes Back, uh, okay. followed by then Fight Club, and then Ooh. Indiana Jones. Really? Lost uh, I know, right? You know what? I hey hey, I have to agree. Just from a personal, I like Fight Club better than Indiana Jones, but I love them both. But I like Fight Club better. So yeah. I would I would have thought Indy was you know just from a box office people's choice. Exactly. Yeah, I know. Totally would agree. Totally would agree. Totally would agree. All right, Dave. Yes. So you just happen to have, congratulations, Thank you. the first three slots. Best movies of all time, slot one, two, and three. Is it going to be Pulp Fiction, The Godfather, or The Shawshank Redemption in slots one, two, and three? The Shawshank Redemption, The Godfather, Pulp Fiction. Godfather, Pulp Fiction, Shawshank Redemption. All right. You get one point as well. The correct order is The Godfather. I think we all pretty much any Anyone who's ever seen the top movie of all time knows that list, right? Yeah, so you yeah. get The Godfather, and then Shawshank Redemption, believe it or not, and then Pulp Fiction. You know, a buddy of mine, Paul Butler, would agree with you. I'm not a fan of The Shawshank Redemption. I don't dislike it. I don't dislike it, but it's not like in my top ten movies. Why did you just uh, use you're, it? I own it. I own it. I watch it once a year. It's awesome. Why did you movie. just say it like an old man? The Shawshank Redemption. What the hell? Did I say the? Did I? Yes, you did. You did. Ah, Michael, this, the Shawshank Redemption, <laughs> just uh, like the Star War, not what? my favorite. <laughs> Should have been Wars. the Pulp Fiction. Should have been the Pulp Fiction. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh my God. Where's my pastrami sandwich? Right. Oh, get off my lawn! Have a happy birthday from Spence, uh, Dave. That was just—I just happened to see that in the, in the chat room. So, thank you, Spence. Yeah. All right. So here we go, Pete. Back to you. Yes. Uh, four slots: fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen. Okay. That's only three. That is three. That's that's, that's three slots, Mike. Not that's four. Three slots. Yeah. That's right. correct. Hey, Mike. Uh huh. Yeah. What? What did I do? <laughs> you said four. Four. <laughs> really? Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Good. Uh, my ADD medicine's wearing off. What do you want? Right. To do? <laughs> right. uh, <laughs> everything we want. To blame do. it. Blame it on the pills. All right. Um, okay. Your three slots: fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen. Back to the Future. Ooh. Gladiator. The Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> so the Silence oh. of the Lambs. The Back to the Future or the Gladiator? Ooh, god damn it! Yeah, you're right. I hate this game. Um... The Gladiator, <laughs> The Silence of the Lambs, The Back to the Future. I'll just put them in all orders, possible orders. That way, you know. We'll be completely confused. That's right. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, the beloved Back to the Future, followed by. God damn it. Silence of the Lambs and Gladiator. So Back to the Future, Silence of the Lambs, Gladiator. Pete, you at least get yourself one point. Nice. <laughs> okay. I'll take it. All right. Uh, because you uh, actually, believe it or not, the Gladiator was number 15. The Silence of uh, the Lamb is 16. And Back to the Future was 17. How is back to that's the wrong. That's, that's just I wrong. Call no, I know. I no. call well, shenanigans. Well, I, I know, but it's interesting when you take three movies like this and you group this is the the, the interesting thing. Yeah. I could I could have taken it and put back to the future and then like the next three down and then you might have gotten it. But because I, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, but Mike, you know what's funny is that cuz I did this with rotten rankings. These right. are so fucking close. They're yeah. like, you know, it's like 89.5 and 89.6. They're not it's not that, you know, Back to the Future was so much lower than Gladiator. It was like that right. much lower. But I get it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh Dave. Yes. Do you ever you like the movie? Uh do you ever see the movie The Usual Suspects? Oh my yes. Oh, so good. How about how about The Die Hard? 
Oh my yes, the Die Hard. I love the Die Hard. And best Christmas best movie ever. Christmas movie ever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Who can't forget the Rocky? Oh, the Rocky. Ooh, right. Yes. I like you know the Rocky. Hey, the hey, Rocky's great. Hey, a fun fact: never seen it. You never saw no. the Rocky. Never Get seen off it. the podcast. I know, Get right? The I, know. I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. I know. So, never so seen it. What I'm, what I'm saying is you've seen like Rocky 2, Rocky 3, but you never nope. actually saw the Rocky. You haven't seen any of the Rockies? Never seen a Rocky movie. All right. True fact. Okay. 55-year-old true fact right here. I would play the, the 45 of the Rocky theme uh-huh. in my mom's apartment when I was – I must have been what thirteen or something when I was trying to get fit and get <laughs> <young>. and <laughs> <I> would, <laughs> Yeah, forty-five <laughs> RPM record of the Rocky theme. There was a store in the mall where you'd buy that stuff. Yes, that was yes. our eighth grade theme song, "Eye of the Tiger." Uh huh. Yep. Eye of the Tiger. Yeah. Oh, that was like a later Rocky movie. That wasn't in was Rocky. It? That no, was it wasn't. In Rocky. No. What was it, that it, one? Da, 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 yeah, no, what was Eye of the Tiger? Eye of the Tiger. Eye of the Tiger is the thrill of the fight. Right yeah, yeah, but which. Was, was, was that a Rocky? Or, I was, it might yes. have been a Rocky. Yeah, it was. Okay. It was, that was Rocky, too. When he, that was when he, right. he jogged all the way up to so, Philadelphia. So, so wait, wait. So that goes to show that I've never seen a Rocky. I've never seen the Rocky. Anyway, let's get back to the game. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Carry on, carry on. All right, so. It was Rocky, Dave, you Die have, Hard. You have Rocky, The Usual Suspects, oh Die Hard. Now, now, this is, and just so you know, this is ranked 32, 33, and 34. And this is like people's choice? Yeah. Is that, is that the perspective? Mm-hmm. All right. I'm, I'm going to yeah. have to rank. So what are schlubs going to say? Well, exactly. Um, all right. Rocky, Die Hard, Usual Suspects. That's not my personal ranking, but that's what I think it's going to be. You guys are consistently getting one. one and I'm, I'm proud one of you. Point. This is going to be a close game. This is why I like this. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So let's see what Actually, in slot, in slot number 32, it was the usual suspects. In slot number 33, Die Hard and Rocky at a uh, paltry 34. Now, you know, in, of all the movies, you know, the Rocky, the original one, is a little slow, especially in the beginning. You know what I mean? It's there's a lot of plot development. So no, I think I hey. think we're I think we're applying a younger aesthetic to yeah. this. Right? Yes, I did, I did mention dregs of the internet, didn't I? Yes. Hey, I I, 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 I just okay. I want to say one thing, and and Spence pointed it out, and it's true. I hate to admit it, because I. I think of Die Hard as a Christmas movie, but there is a metric for defining it, and I'm still I still say it's a Christmas movie in my heart. Okay, so so I ain't fighting with anybody. But what I'm going to say is that for a movie to be a Christmas movie, to be a die like a like a straight up Christmas movie, if you take Christmas out of it, the movie falls apart. Mm. Okay. So. Die Hard, by that definition, is not a Christmas. Movie. The Santa Claus. No, no that's bullshit. The, no, this would not have been there. The movie could not have happened, dude. Dude, because dude, it's the yeah, only time in stop. the year when the building would have been empty. No, no, dude, no, no, dude, it, no, no. Because you could, you could take almost any. It could be, it could be New Year's Eve. It could be Thanksgiving. There's, there's a bunch of holidays you could replace it with. That's not the point. It could be the move. The building could be closed for renovation, or, or I don't, whatever, whatever. It could be their anniversary. They close the building down for their, for the anniversary because Japanese people are like that. They, they are very traditional about like celebrations and stuff. I'm yeah. just saying so. that it, if you take Christmas oh. out of Die Hard, hold on. Yeah, it dies. OBS, OBS, hold on. Uh, OBS disconnected. It's reconnecting. Give it a second. There it we go. Okay, we're reconnecting. Yeah, I know. But it, it's actually flawless. The audience will never even notice. Um, well, they will now. <laughs> they will now. So so it's just that's just the metric of what defines a Christmas movie versus not a Christmas movie. But I don't give a fuck. It's still a Christmas movie in my mind. So I ain't fighting that battle. Hey. Fight yeah. me, bro. Okay, fight, fight me, bro. I right, gotcha. All right. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, Peter. Yeah. In slots 15, 16, and 17. Nope. That, I'm wrong. That, 28, 29, and 30. My, my bad. In slots 28, 29, and 30, we have Jaws, 
Oh, Jur- <laughs> the Jurassic Park and the Seven. Ooh. God damn it. Oh, well. Dregs seven, of humanity. Dregs of humanity, Peter. Jurassic Park, Jaws. All right. So, as far as I'm concerned, Jaws is one of the greatest movies of all time ever. Ever. Um, oh, that's a great Christmas movie. It's not a. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jurassic Park, I know, was rated super high, but it's not one of my favorites. And Seven is just beautiful. Um, yeah. So I'm going to say, and I know it's going to be wrong, because I know they're going to. Mm. The odds forever be against you. <laughs> Jaws 7, Jurassic Park. Wow. You get a point. God damn it. <laughs> damn it. It is at slot 29. I mean, 28, rather. You get seven. So seven ranked the highest. Mm. Jaws. It's a great movie, but. Sandwiched uh, above Jurassic Park at 30. Wait a minute. I got zero. No, you said Jurassic Park was last. Okay. And was Jurassic Park last? Uh, yes. Okay, sorry. Okay, fantastic. All right, well, I've got a point. Fantastic. That's it. You either get one point or you get three. Right, yeah. Nothing. Those are the options. Yeah, Which means if I get much. all three right on this one, I'm going to crush you. That's do correct. it, Dave. Well, actually, Dave, you, you do have one advantage over me. The guest, if, if, if we tie, the guest always gets the, gets the win. So That's right. I have to beat you by a point. So go ahead, Mike. Okay, here we go. You ready for this one? Bring it. Bring it. You get at slot 45... 46 and 47. Okay? So mm-hmm. uh, one of them is Toy Story. One of them is E.T., the extra testicle. And the other one is uh, that oldie but goodie, It's a Wonderful Life. Oh, oh. my God. <laughs> Jay Libby's going, no, that's number one. It's number yeah, one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so, so It's a Wonderful Life. What are the other two? Okay, so you get uh, Toy Story. Toy Story. First animated uh, movie of all times, fully animated. Right, right. You get It's a Wonderful Life, and right. you get E.T., the extraterrestrial. The oh, E.T. That's tough. Okay, Toy Story, E.T., It's a Wonderful Life. Because we're dealing with the dregs of humanity here. Dave, you have done nearly the opposite of one of the impossibles. You got zero points. Zero oh. points. No. <laughs> I lose. I lose. But you lost with dignity. That's right. And finish. <laughs> or at least so that's it is lose. actually at slot 45, E.T., the extraterrestrial. Hmm. And then slot 46, It's a Wonderful Life. And ranked 47, Toy Story, which I think is just... They got robbed. That's a, That's tra- a travesty. Tra- right? Tra- yes, it's a travesty. It's a travesty, I tell you. All right. Back to you, Peter. Yeah. yeah. How many more of these we got? Uh, two more. Okay. Uh, so we have uh, Forrest the Gump. Ooh, good movie. The Dark Knight and, oh, Peter, the Star War. Now, this the is. The Star War 4? Nope, the Star War one, right. well, or four, three, four, if you're four, counting. Four. Uh, so, the, and this is actually at uh, at uh, ranked numbers four, five, and six. So you have the okay. Dark Knight, Star Wars, Forrest Gump, Forrest Gump, Star Wars, the Dark Knight. Okay. Well. Now, what what are these rankings based on? People, like, what are they? Uh, people upvoting. Ranker is just if you, oh, you oh, go there. Oh, this is people. This this is them. not yeah. this is not movie critics. It's this just is people. Not box office. This it, is not even a poll. Okay. This is people upvoting shit on. The okay, I got you. I got you. Third time, the okay. dregs of the internet. I got you. I got. I got the. I got. I got. Okay. So the dregs are gonna do, Dark Knight, the Star War, and the Forest. Mm. Well, Dave, you're in well kept good company because he got a donut. <laughs> he just got a donut. donut. Hey, wait a minute, Mike. That deserves a. 
Yeah. <laughs> so, so you get Star Wars at number four, right? You get okay. That? The Forest Gump and The Dark Knight. See, uh, I will, okay. I will tell you. Think about it in terms of how long a movie has been out and how long it has been able to be upvoted too. You know. Uh, well, I was. You know what I did? I went. I went a different direction. I was like, this is probably put out. Re you know, r relatively recently, and the younger crowd are more likely to vote on these movies, so they would go with the later move. Like you know, Yo, Dark Knight was so rad, man. You know, that's <laughs> what I'm thinking. And uh, lastly. Uh, unless we have a tie, I do have a tiebreaker, but... You don't need being, a tiebreaker. <laughs> I know. But go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this is... Oh, you know what? This was the top 50 movies. This wasn't okay. the top 100. I forgot about that. All right. So, but this is the bottom of the list. This okay. is uh, slots 48, 49, and 50. We have uh, Alien, the first oh, one. Oh, God. So good. The Wizard of Id. Or 2001, A Space Odyssey. So you have The Wizard of Oz, 2001, A Space Odyssey, an alien. I have no idea what these people are thinking. Um, oh, God. I can tell you, the movie critics, Alien, scored 100%. Yeah, I'll, I'll put Alien at 48, uh, uh, 2001 at 50. And Wizard of Oz at 49. Is that your final answer? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 wait. <laughs> wait I'm you, John, I, yes, Mike, I'm sorry. That is my final answer. No, zero. <laughs> what? Yes. So, uh, uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, number 48. 48. Uh, the Wizard of Oz, number 49. And Alien, unfortunately... 50. Didn't I say Wizard wow. of Oz was 49? Nah. Nah. No? Okay. Nah. Nah. Doesn't matter. I still win because I don't I, – I, yeah. I'm a guest. All right. So let's do this, Mike. Let's do – being that Dave could win by tying, let's do the tiebreaker. We'll both we'll both write down what we're going to do. There you go. What we're going to do. Go. All, All right. right. You're going to hate like me on that. this one. Okay. Well, I already hate you, so. I was going to say more than we already do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So – all right, this tiebreaker, though, actually is a little more easy. Uh, this is all throughout the list. So I'm going to give you three – I'm going to give you these three movies, and it's, they're not one on top of the other. They're not adjacent. So okay. when I tell you these, uh, it's going to be slots 10, slots 36, and slot 40. Okay? okay? So uh, we have uh, Full Metal Jacket. Oh, yes. The Matrix. Oh. And the Terminator. And I will even give you guys a hint. That is not the order it should be in. <laughs> so Full Metal Jacket, The Matrix, The Terminator. All right, I'm ready. Me too. Okay. Mike, I'll go in reverse order. I'm going Terminator, Matrix, Full Metal Jacket. And I went so you're Terminator, going, and I went Terminator, Full Metal Jacket, Matrix. Nice, from the bottom to the top. Okay, uh, so ten, make... we both say is the Matrix, right? Is that right? Uh, uh, I say Terminator was the was the best. Okay, because because I, I can't remember the, the numbers you were saying, Mike. Okay, and I said Matrix was the best. Okay, so Matrix is the best. I get one point. Right. Dave gets a so point. Dave gets that. All right. This is what we should have done. I should have had you guys just play against each other. We probably should have. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. That's so what we're then I, do next time. I said Matrix was number two, so I got that wrong. And right. I said Full Metal Jacket was number two. Uh, nope. I got. Uh, so Pete, uh, Pete, what did you say was number two? Number, Matrix. Okay. Ma num Matrix is not number two. Okay. What is and then number I, two? And then full I, Metal Jacket is number two. Okay, that's I, what I said. I said Full Metal Jacket was number did. two. Okay, yeah. so Dave gets a point for that. Okay, and then I said Full Metal Jacket was number three. Right. And I said Terminator and was number three. And Terminator is number three. 
Dave, you got three points, brother. I got three points. Yeah, I got I got three points. Wow. So I don't, I I don't think... need your I don't need your guest charity. I own no, that. You don't. No, you don't. <laughs> hey, Dave. You know what hey. you get? You what know what you get? get? What do I get? Yay! <laughs> you have to do a queenly wave. Queenly wave. Queenly wave. <laughs> Congratulations, I'd like to thank Dave. my parents for not practicing birth control. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Dave Oops Robertson. <laughs> right. Hey, that's me. I'm I'm a I was a big old oops. I think I think many of us were oopses, and that's that's okay. That's just the universe saying, we gotta get this motherfucker in the world. Yeah. So I, let's make it I happen. wasn't an oops. My mom I, can tell you. She <laughs> tried her ass off. Literally, and that was the so, problem. <laughs> right? Oh, when never try too hard. Things things don't always work out. Mom, yeah, I can. Supposed I, to be the, Never mind. I, I can tell you that the 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 great Cthulhu decided that I needed a child to end my ravaging of the world. <laughs> Somebody calm his ass down. Give him right. a kid. <laughs> That's so what it was. it was. Cthulhu that knocked up. Yeah, oh, he, said, uh, he said. He said. Put a stake in that foot. <laughs> so, your, so your child is a shoggoth. Is that what you're saying? Yes, yes. Yes, she is. Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Yes, right. <laughs> she is slowly eating my soul. <laughs> and I'm enjoying Jesus. every every minute of it. I'm enjoying every minute of it. I got I had so much soul to give. <laughs> That's oh, right. Dear. You can avoid a, you can afford a nibble here and a and a yeah, chop. Sure, why not? <laughs> All right. What the hell am I gonna do with it? I've Sell already it. wasted Sell I've already wasted eBay. fifty almost fifty years of it, so <laughs> all right, let's wrap this puppy up. Agreed. All right. Gentlemen, this has been a blast. It's been awesome. Hey, where where do we find stuff? So our our the, Dave, where is it? Our archivos dot digital. I, I'm I am good with archivos, I'm good with archivos. Either or is perfectly legit. There is no judgment either way. I How about it's archivos? I say archivos, but as long as you're spelling it A-R-C-H-I-V-O-S, I don't care. Okay. Uh, it's all good. So you can go to archivos.digital, A-R-C-H-I-V-O-S dot digital. That's our main website, blog posts, uh, FAQs, uh, support connections, all of that stuff is in there. You can also click a link in there to subscribe to the app. And the online app is app, A-P-P. Dot archivos dot digital that will oh, give you the free story catalog and all the awesomeness it's where you sign up for your subscriptions i didn't even know it was an ad i didn't know there was an app how did i miss that okay i gotta get the app now uh and then of course if you're gonna if, the url that's the url of right. the thing that you were showing us earlier is right. just the url is app dot archivos. Right. there is no and, app yet there will be oh, there oh okay okay i got you all right and if you're going to do NaNoWriMo, which I encourage every person, every person out there who thinks they have a story in them to give it a go if you can make it happen. Um, you know, you can you can get Archivos one month free, which is good. Um, and I'm pinning that up with the uh, NaNoWriMo 2018 um, code. I'm pinning that. It'll be in the top of the chat. Awesome. And and let's and let's face it. You know what? The the free version, which is what I'm using right now, is fantastic for yourself. You know, I, I'm not ready to share it with the world yet. So it's a fantastic tool for me to use as, as just a, as a, um, a development tool to write my story. And, of course, Dave is like, yeah, please, please do that. So Absolutely. That's why we so, built the darn thing. So you, you can try it out. And if you're like, God, I love this thing and I want to share it with the world, then you can, you can sacrifice one frigging cup of coffee at Starbucks a month right. and, and afford go. it. Right. So – Sacrifice your cup and buy Dave a cup. Right. Yes. yes. Absolutely. Buy Trade. Dave give. A cup of just, coffee. just give Dave a cup of co your cup of coffee one That's day a month. That's all I need. Right. And you'll have all this story awesomeness at your fingertips. Right. Thousands and thousands of hours of development. Right, Dave. <laughs> truth, baby. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know how it goes. Truth. I know how it goes. <laughs> Took a All right, really, let's wrap. Really, 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 really long time. No. Really, really, right. really long time. Yeah. All right, you guys. You know what? You've just enjoyed another awesome episode of the Mythwits. We're live on Facebook Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Please ask our guests questions or just banter with the other Mythfits. We had a good crowd tonight. If you miss our live show, you can always catch the encore episodes on Facebook or YouTube. Find us at Mythwits.com on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube as Mythwits. 
if you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher. And holy crap, Mike, we've got a lot of listeners now. It's crazy. Do the follow, Ooh. like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate, and make sure to share your favorite episode on social media to help spread Mythwit's love over the entire planet. And we do. We love all you people. We are a lovable podcast. Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it. Don't sell it. And for God's sake, don't write a novel about it. You'll only get about 25 words, and all of them will be bad. Mythwits <laughs> is part of the TSR Podcast Network. Check out TSRPN.com for more cool shows. And there really are a lot of good shows. I mean, Game School is kicking ass. Spence and James are doing a fantastic job. Make sure to check out our parent company, AetherForce.com, for more cool stuff and join our mailing list. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. And until next week, Mike... Dave Robertson, happy 55th birthday, you magnificent bastard. Mm, thank yes. you. Thank you. Ta-ta-ta.